Hello and welcome back to the Colorado Rockies franchise where last time we took on the Arizona Diamondbacks in a three game series and the San Francisco Giants in a three game series. We also took a look at our AAA affiliate, the Albuquerque Isotopes. On their opening day they lost 8-11 to but we saw some good hitting going on from the young guys. Today we're going to take on the Dodgers and Mets in three game series for uh, each of them. We're actually going to take a look at the box score for game number one which we lost 6-8. to as you can see, Alvin Perez took the loss. We'll get to that. So the box score, Trevor Story had three hits, you know, the two spot. He was killing it. Home run for him and Brendan Rodgers. But Alvin Perez blew the game there in the eighth inning, giving up four. But we'll see if we're uh, game number two, hopefully bouncing back after that one. Game number two here between the Colorado Rockies and Los Angeles Dodgers. Rockies 3-8 and eight in the season, taking on Clayton Kershaw, who's off to a good start yet again, you know, like always. Kershaw... 2-0, 1.32 ERAs, killing it. Getting top you. Drowned it up the middle, and Seager Noxus went down, but uh, would not be able to make a play on that as Tapia is on first with a leadoff base hit. Uh, this is the lineup following Trevor Story, who just flew out. You got Blackman, Crone, Diaz, Owing, Staza, McMahon, Hampson. But yeah, we have the worst slugging percentage in the NL, the Rockies, that is. Need to really start hitting better if we're going to do anything this year. Charlie Blackman's going to chop it to first, and the Dodgers are going to turn a 3-6-3 double play to get out of it. Take a look at the Rockies starter for today, John Gray, who's 0-1, not off to a good start. More walks than strikeouts. Taking on Mookie Betts here to start things and striking him up with a slider, so maybe a better start than uh, last game. He got rocked uh, to first start. Getting a fly ball to left field here where uh, Chris Owings is getting the start in left, making the play there. It's a nice 1-2-3 inning, looks like. Yeah, but Trevor Story is going to make an error on the play there. I don't know what that was. Trying to do too much. Probably should have just ate it. Lucky for him, though, John Gray gets Cody Bellinger swinging to not let anything happen after the error. Kershaw is going to continue to pitch well here, getting a ground out top of the second from Crone. Diaz, who is our platoon guy against lefties, gets a hold on, but gets a little too far underneath of it. And would fly out. Chris Owings, the number six hitter, swings at a fastball inside. Just looking terrible. Hitting's been awful to start the year. Full count to Seeger. He's going to walk. Hoping to start something for the Dodgers. Here early. John Gray gets a ground ball, but nobody's there as they were in double play depth. So now you got first and second and nobody out. Max Muncy swings at the fastball and misses, though. John Gray trying to get out of the inning without allowing any damage. A.J. Pollock chops it up the middle. Trevor Story doesn't make an error this time, and they get a 6-4-3 double play to get out of that. Jumping ahead to the top of the fifth, Kershaw still dealing, striking out Crone, who has really got off to a slow start this year. Diaz grounded it to Justin Turner at third, makes the easy play. Chris Owings in a full count. He's going to stri strike this one right at the first baseman, Muncy. And that would all be all for the top of the fifth. Head to the bottom here. Will Smith swinging at the fastball inside. Striking out John Gray. Up to four strikeouts here. Both pitchers pitching pretty well. Gets Muncy to chop it into the shift there. Garrett Hampson fields it and makes the play. John Gray getting a pop out here to shallow right center field. Toppy would get underneath of it. And both pitchers threw five without allowing a run. Jumping ahead to the bottom of the sixth. Edwin Rios is going to beat the shift here, grounding it right to where the third baseman probably would have been for a leadoff base hit. Mookie Betts, though, goes down swinging at the slider. John Gray is trying to keep match Clayton Kershaw. Zach Trent Kinstry, though, would ground it up the middle for a base hit. Now two on and one out. They're going to stick with John Gray. He gets a wild pitch here, but luckily Diaz is able to corral that quickly. Turner now going to ground it at the first baseman. Crone, who's usually the DH, but he's able to turn the double play as Gray is through six, and we are still tied at 0-0. Top of the seventh, Toppy is going to start things off with a bloop base hit. And Trevor Story stepping up, though, swinging at that nasty 12-6 curve that Kershaw has been known for for years. Seventh strikeout in the game for him. And Kershaw gets a chopper to the second baseman and gets a double play to get out of that. We get to the bottom of the seventh. That would be all for John Gray and the Rockies. They would uh, call on Ben Bowden. 
his sixth appearance on the season. He is off to a pretty good start. Uh, one of the top prospects for the Rockies in their pitching staff. Gets a ground ball that just is able to be fielded by Trevor Story. He makes a nice play on that one for the first out. Corey Seager stepping up. As Ben Bowden gets out two tough lefties there in Bellinger and Seager. Will Smith, though, the righty, gets him and grounds it right past Trevor Story. Now Muncy up. Bowden's able to get a fly ball here that Tapia is going to be able to field. And we are through seven, still tied at zero. Can anybody score a run? Oh, Crone ain't doing anything there. Swinging that slider way out of the zone. Don't know what he was trying to do with that one. He is supposed to be a lefty specialist catcher here. Gets underneath of it and flies out to Mookie. Kershaw still dealing. And will he get the third out? Chris Owings up. And he will with that change up. Swing in there too. Michael Givens called upon. His fifth appearance. He's been pretty good. Pretty rock solid on a one-year deal. Rocky's hoping that he pitches well enough to get traded at the trade deadline. Unless they make a run of their own. But he's going to start things off here by walking A.J. Pollock in the bottom of the order up. Number nine hitter there, D.H. Edwin Rios. Going to drive it here over the left fielder Owings' head, and it's going to one-hop right into the wall. But lucky for the Rockies, uh, the runner at first did not get a good jump, and they would not score a run. They would walk Buki, pitch around him. Now McKinstry would be up with the bases loaded, and he's going to just bloop it right over the infield's head and get an RBI single. The Rockies would bring in a weird shift here, hoping to... Get something out of uh, Justin Turner here. Got the corner's in, and they get exactly what they position the defense to do. A double play where they get the force out at home. Allowing no runs on that. That's huge. But wouldn't matter, though. Bellinger's going to hit a three-run homer here. This one just keeps carrying and carrying right over Rowing's head. And the Dodgers would take a 4 nothing lead heading into the top of the ninth. Kershaw's still out here on the mound. And over 100 pitches, striking out Daza. It's up to... 107, that's his 10th strikeout in the game. Now at 110, facing McMahon, who is going to pop out. Looks like the Rockies are going to go out meekly here. But Garrett Hampson is going to try to start something, I guess, with a base hit up the middle. Kershaw still out there. 118 pitches. He's going to walk Tapia and Dave Roberts. Gave Kershaw a long leash. Up, you know, near 120 pitches is a little early in the season. They're going to give him the pull here. Give him the hook, yank him, and call on Kenley Jansen to try to shut things down. He's perfect in the save department this year. Five for five. Hoping to shut down this little Rockies rally attempt. Facing Trevor Story. Trevor Story going to go down swinging as the Dodgers take game two, four nothing. Rockies could not muster any offense. Good game from John Gray. But you can't win games without scoring a run. Three hits. Toppy with two of them. At least he's getting going, maybe. Gray with five strikeouts and six innings. Only walked one, so. Lose game three here. One to three. And now we will get swept by the Dodgers. We'll take a look at the box score. McMahon had a couple hits there. Doubles from Story. McMahon. Gomber was okay. Not his best, but he had eight strikeouts. Pretty good. Stevenson gave up a run. But, again, only one run for this Rockies offense. We're going to jump ahead to this Mets series here we are for this Mets series. Rockies 3 and 10 to begin the season. Antonio Senzatella off to a rough start, like many of the Rockies pitchers here in 2021. Facing Jonathan Villar, who's batting leadoff. 2 2 count. He's going to float it into foul territory here. Left fielder Hilliard would run it down, though, for out number one. Brendan Nimmo, the center fielder for the Mets, hitting 189, is going to get a base hit here. And Hilliard has a busy start to the game over there in left. He's going to attempt to steal second base here, but Nunez would gun him out with a perfect throw and a nice tag from Story as we're going to take a second look. Nice, right on the money. Then you have to move the glove very far, which is really going to uh, be a pain for the Mets here as Dom Smith's going to beat the shift. Runner getting thrown out. Sucks for them, and they're going to get a two-out double from Dominic Smith. And a walk to Pete Alonzo, two on and two out. Michael Conforto. Uh, line it right at Charlie Blackman who's going to throw it in quickly leaving the bases loaded Jeff McNeil going to float it over the infield's head get a bloop base hit and the Rockies luck terrible on that one 2-0 lead now for the Mets 
JD Davis is going to chop it back to Sensatella so he avoids any further damage. But with how bad the Rockies' offense has been, two, no two runs might be enough. Marcus Stroman getting the call for the Mets. Top yield that in leadoff like usual, hitting 200 as we're going to see uh, once we look take a look at this lineup right here. Besides Trevor Story, not a whole lot of good. Everybody else hitting pretty terrible. I mean, that's just the batting averages. When you look at the slugging, like I meant, I don't know if I mentioned that in the first uh, series, they have the NL worst slugging percentage, which uh, not good. Two quick outs. Charlie Blackman at the plate. He's going to chop it at the shortstop. Lindor, the $341 million man, and that would be the end of the top or bottom of the first. And Sensatella trying to bounce back. Strikes out Lindor, who just made the play in the field. And McCann's going to strike out. So two strikeouts back-to-back -back for Sensatella. Not known for the strikeout. Facing Villar, who's going to fly out. So bounce back inning there. He gets three quick outs. Rockies need to do something, though. C.J. Crone hitting 174. Looking at the sinker. He goes down. And with two away, Stroman would strike out the Rockies' side. Not looking good at all. Brandon Nimmo. Striking out. Sensatella trying to keep the Rockies in the game here early. Pete Alonso now with two away is going to get underneath of it and fly out to Rymel Tapia to end the top of the third. So we jump to the bottom of the third now with Brendan Rodgers in a full count. He's going to walk. Lead off walk. Dom Nunez is going to ground it right at the first baseman. Alonso though and two are away just like that. Rockies just can't seem to get anything going. Only as we get a two-out walk, which should bring to the plate the top of the order on Romeo Tapia, who's going to get a base hit past Lindor, bringing up Trevor Story. Rockies trying to get a two-out rally, and Trevor Story is going to ground it down the third baseline, and that's going to uh, score one run for the Rockies. They cut the lead to one. Two-to-one lead now for the Mets. Stroman trying to get out of it. He's going to walk. Blackman loading the bases for the struggling C.J. Crone. C.J. Crone really needs to get something going or he's going to be off the roster. And he gets a hold of one and sends it over Dom Smith's head. And it's going to carry out of here for a grand slam. Maybe this is the corner he needs and the team needs to turn and hope to play better. 5-2 to two lead just like that. Uh, bloop base hit for Fuentes after the diving glove of Conforto. He's, he nearly makes the play. Sam Hillard wants to join in on the home run party, though. And seven runs with two outs are scored. That doesn't happen too often, but with Coors, you never know what can happen. Seven to two lead here in the top of the fourth. McNeil's going to ground it right at Owings, who block, knocks it down if it's a pretty hard hit. At least get one out of the play. Sensatella giving up some more hard contact to J.D. Davis. But there's two outs now after Owings makes that play. Lindor with two outs. They pay him a lot of money and he to do things like this. Hit a two-run homer, making this just a three-run lead, four to seven. Rocky Stilly, but Lindor delivers with that two-run homer. Sensatello would get out of the inning, though. Nunez up now, leading off the top or bottom of the fourth. And he would have a solo home run. Third home run of the game for the Rockies. Making it eight to four. Now Grand Slam can only tie him. Nunez needs to get going too. We need the catcher position in general because we got nothing out of it last year and in 2019. But Trevor Story is going to line up to center to end the bottom of the fourth. Top of the fifth year, Villar is going to answer right back with a home run. That just seems to be what happens here. Bad Rockies pitching. Bad Rockies hitting. They have the league worst ERA. They have the third amount, third least amount of runs scored on the season. And it could have been another home run here, but lucky for the Rockies, it just ends up being a fly out right in front of the warning track to Charlie Blackman. Law, or Dominic Smith, my bad, going to go down swinging on the changeup. Full count to Pete Alonzo. Since it's all trying to qualify for this win, or the win chance, you know, because you need to get through five. He gets the chop back to him, and that would be all for him as we head to the top of the sixth here. Carlos Estevez getting called upon. It's been pretty good. Bullpen's been okay for the most part. A couple of guys have been struggling. Um, going to be hit against the shift here. It's going to go over Hilliard's head and off the wall. But he plays it nicely and keeps it to a double at least. 
McNeil going to ground to the first baseman, so runner at third with one out now. Can he avoid any damage or any runs? Well, he gets a strike out here on Davis. Two away now. Lindor, who already has a two-out home run, and the game's going to line it right at Tapia. Just, just missing that one. Brennan Rogers here in the bottom of the sixth is going to float it down the first baseline. And it's going to be fouled, just missing out there on at least a base hit. Going to chop it at the middle, but Lindor would be there for the uh, out. Now we have two outs in the bottom of the sixth. Dom Nunez, who's already homered once, going to homer again. Second home run of the game. Fourth home run overall for the Rockies. They increase their lead, make it 9-5. to five. K1 Walker, though, would get out of it with a strikeout on Owings, who has also been struggling. Yancy Almonte would be called upon out of the pen. He's been great since they recalled him out, you know, after sending down Kinley or Kindly, however you want to pronounce it. He strikes out McCann to start the top of the seventh. Gets Villar to chop it to Story, who's going to make an error on the play. He makes a bad throw. He's been struggling with the fielding. I don't know. Maybe he's in his own head about a possible trade or contract. But needs to get that under control. Charlie Blackman's going to field that for out number two. Dom Smith now going to walk. Bringing up the dangerous Pete Alonso. With two outs and two on. He goes down swinging on the 96 mile or two seam fastball inside. Rockies keep their lead 9-5. to five, Hit to the bottom of the seventh with one away. Story going to hit a solo shot to center field here. Fifth home run of the game for the Rockies, making the lead five runs there. Grand slam proof now. C.J. Cronin a full count. Striking out on the sinker, though. As we head to the top of the eighth, Rockies calling Oliver Perez, you know. Hoping that one of the guys that's been struggling needs a bounce back outing. Really need him to perform, and he's facing Conforto to start. Ooh, he'd fly out, so getting some soft contact, you know, that's what you expect out of Perez. He's not going to strike a ton of guys out. You want the soft contact. He's getting more soft contact. Jeff McNeil popping up just outside the infield to Trevor Story for out number two. J.D. Davis going to get in under this one. Driving a little further than the other ones. But Toppy would call off Blackman and record the third out. So we head to the top of the ninth. Edinson Volquez would be called upon. Here's the injury replacement for Gonzalez who got injured. He might be back at some point soon. So Volquez needs a chance to prove himself. And he's getting a chance here in a non-save situation, getting a fly out to start things. Don't know how much longer the 37-year-old's going to play in the majors. Facing the number nine hitter McCann here, not looking terrible, right? Gets a fly out to left field that Hilliard would field. Nice little play over the shoulder. Villar with two outs now. Ground it right at the first base from Fuentes, and that would be all. So the Rockies win 10-5, to finally winning a game that we actually watched. First one they've done, I believe, and scoring 10 runs, is just ugh. pitching was not great, obviously. 10 runs, though, your offense exploded. Five five home runs. Couldn't really ask for much more from the offense there. Nunez with two home runs. You know, that's nice to see out of him. Perez with the bounce back getting. Needs that. Need him to start pitching well. We're going to take a look at the rest of the series as we take two of three from the Mets, winning 6-4 in game two and two to or losing 2-11 in game three. Um, looks like Ryan McMahon had two, a home run, two hits. Nice to see him. Maybe he'll get going. And Felix Hernandez pitched better. Didn't walk anybody. Gave up 10 hits, but was able to control that, you know, and get the win. Game three here, we lose 11 to 2. Another home run for McMahon. Nice to see that. Rogers up to 270 on the batting average. He played DeGrom, though, so it's tough. Marquez got shelled. Volquez gave up four runs. But uh, yeah, I guess next time we'll be taking on the Houston Astros, at least in. See where we're headed after that, so see you then. See you next time.